Hi, I'm Carl Conrad and welcome to Australian Immigration News, proudly brought to you by Australian Immigration Law Services right here in Sydney. And thank you so much to all of you who helped us reach the 80,000 subscriber mark milestone and also the 7 million views plus for the channel since it opened about two and a half years ago. This time next year, 100,000, here we come. Yesterday, finally, the migration strategy was announced, along with a strategy in trying to bring down the numbers of temporary migrants to a sustainable pre-pandemic levels. Today, we are announcing a strategy for a better, fairer and a more sustainable migration system. One that is good for workers because it's good for wages, good for business and good for Australia. This was also joined by the action plan timetable. One has to wonder if it was a strategy itself to release this program just before Christmas and when the big media political programs had already shut down for the end of year break. Clearly the government wants to be seen to be doing something about the migration program, but it does not want to be asked all the hard questions. By the end of the festive season, the general public will have truly forgotten about this strategy release. Rest assured, we will not. So let's just get through some of the highlights tonight, and then in the next follow-up editions, focus on specific areas. And by the way, I still have the tail end of the flu, so sorry for sounding a little strange. So let's cover some of the changes that will happen soon and probably even by next month. Student visas will face the brunt of trying to bring down the numbers of temporary visa holders entering the country. A new English requirement will be brought in amongst other changes. The test score required for student visa will increase from islets from 5.5 to 6.0. The test score required for students undertaking an English language intensive course for overseas students before their main course of study will increase from islets 4.5 to 5.0. The test score required for students undertaking university foundation or pathway programs that deliver reputable English language training will be islets 5.5 or of course the equivalent tests. The government will introduce a new genuine student test for all international students. The GST will outline key areas of consideration to support decision makers, including the circumstances of the applicant, such as their academic or career progression, and the usefulness and the, of the intended study to their future career prospects. These future changes will mean that students moving from one course to another below their current level of study will have a very high chance of visa refusal. One would also expect that moving from a graduate visa back to a student visa again may suffer a similar fate, as the department said in the Migration Strategy Booklet. Prospective international students who cannot demonstrate this sensible course progression from their initial course of study will not meet the genuine student test. These changes to both the graduate visa and the student visas are designed to make it harder for international students to stay in Australia. We will be discussing the impact on these changes in more details in the days to come. By the middle of next year, it will be the turn for the changes for the Graduate 485 visa. The English test score requirement for the temporary Graduate 485 visa will increase from 6.0 to 6.5, which is not such a big change overall. However, the shocker will be the introduction of the maximum eligible age for the 485 visa. It will be reduced to 35, where it is currently sitting at 50. The next disturbing part is the dramatic reduction of visa lengths, as you can see in this table. Two years for the bachelor degree, back to two years for masters by coursework, three years for masters by research, and three years for PhD. The eligibility for a second 485 visa will only be for the regional study components, which will be from one to two years. It seems that all of that recent offer of extension for graduate visa by doing one of those courses in demand list may be just full of hot air. It is yet to be seen if the government will keep its promise it made to students who started those courses that their extension times will still be there when they come to finish. For those who are already eligible for those extensions, I suggest you make use of applying now. Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Towards the end of 2024, the government will create three targeted pathways with a new skills in demand visa. This visa looks set to replace the current 482 visa. The first pathway is the specialist skills pathway. 
The specialist skills pathway will be available to applicants who meet the general eligibility criteria and who are in any occupation except for trade workers, machinery operators and drivers and laborers earning at least $135,000, which is be the new specialist skills threshold and no less than the Australian workers in the same occupation. The second pathway in the new skills in demand visa is called the core skills pathway. Most temporary skill migrants will come through the core skills pathway. The core skills pathway would be available to applicants who meet the general eligibility criteria and whose occupation will be on a new core skills occupation list. Just when we thought we were going to get rid of lists, they're coming back. And this relates to occupations identified by Jobs and Skills Australia as being in shortage or where Australia has committed to providing access to the labour market in relation to occupations through the international trade agreements. And the government will develop a third pathway called the Essential Skills Pathway a more regulated pathway for lower paid workers with essential skills. The government is primarily considering the pathway in the context of the care and support economy. Fortunately, as I predicted earlier, it will be some time before the points test will be changed, but eventually, yes, it's going to be changed. So for now, everyone can take a deep breath. The GSM visas and the points test will be safe for modifications, probably in my guess until the middle of next year. Stand by for the weekend edition, where we will discuss more about this new migration strategy. As always, we are here to help if you are seeking clarity in your migration plans for Australia. Book a time online on our website or just pick up the phone to see if there are any urgent appointments available. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the latest updates and analysis of all the migration law changes. As always, take care out there and I'll see you next time. So bye for now.